Hello and welcome back to Mongolia from the South Gobi. I am continuing my trip here in one of the most sparsely populated countries in the world. We are leaving the South Gobi and heading further north. And in this video, I'm going to show what it's like to stay with a nomadic family and in a local gur, giving you the full tour and experience. But on the way, we're gonna stop in a few places. And the first up here is the largest forest in the whole of the Gobi Desert. It's very nice to walk through here and see something a little bit different here in the Gobi, in the land of the eternal blue sky. But we will continue now on our way to Ongi Monastery as we hit the road. I'm doing this trip with Sunpath. I've been on a tour with them. The link is in the video description if you want to replicate my experience. So after another long and pretty bumpy ride, we have arrived here at a spot where we're going to have lunch in front of wild horses and a few cows as well. This is the Ongi River, the largest river in the Gobi Desert. And it's a little bit greener here as we've moved further north. This is our spot. now at the ruins of Ongi Monastery, which was once one of the largest monastery complexes in the country, scattered across the Ongi River here. Entering into the main rebuilt temple from 2004 at the site, and you can see exactly how colourful it is here. You have to walk around west to east it really feels like somewhere i imagine in tibet to look like the main altar here and pictures of the dalai lama very colorful a slight tinge of Chinese Buddhism to it, mixed with Tibetan to give its own sort of Mongolian style. The ruins all over the site, spanning a large area. So hundreds of years ago, Tibetan Buddhism was introduced to the Mongolian plateau. And this temple complex at the Ongi River was built in 1760. And during its heyday, more than a thousand monks any one time could be accommodated here. Once Mongolia became a communist country and the purges of the 1930s began. This monastery, of course, like many others, was also affected, shut down, burnt to the ground essentially, and more than 200 monks losing their lives. This white stupa here commemorates those who died, those lamas, monks, that lost their lives. Following more than 70 years of communism, Mongolia became a democracy in 1993. Since then, there has been an effort to revive its Buddhist history and to bring back some of the old monasteries and Buddhist temples. And so today there are three monks who come here, one of which you can see inside. He was a boy when things first changed and he, at his old age, has come back today as one of the monks. Quite an incredible story. Look here, amongst the 
rubble of the 28 temples at the complex. An important piece of the jigsaw. Look, just lying here since the 1930s. Nothing changed. So we have made it to the nomadic family's home and they're going to show us a little bit about their living space and how they're making some of the Mongolian cheeses and yogurt. I'm gonna show you a little bit inside their gur too. We're now a bit further north in between Ongi Monastery and the Orkan Valley back on the grasslands of what is the Northern Gobi. And as I've said many times in the last few videos, except now it's grass, a sea of scenery all around. In fact, here it's almost a bit overwhelming. You can see these great big shadows from the clouds above there. But we're going to head inside the mobile home first. <laughs> so I'll show the girl properly later. We've been received in a modern sort of mobile home which is used by lots of families here in Mongolia today and it's something the government is incentivizing people to do. So this one is dried yogurt aro, which comes from goats. Mm. This one here is the clarified butter. You can eat them together. Like, oh. like this. Very milky, very soft. Okay. And also, yeah. the traditional milk tea, which you will get given. Always receive it with the right hand. Oh. Yes, that's good. Mm. Showing you the inside of the gur. When you go inside, don't step on the frame. When entering, you should go west or to the left direction. The center of the gur is designed to let smoke go out and sunlight come in. Usually the east side, the right side is the women's side. It's where you'll see the cooking appliances and water buckets. At the back is the most sacred place of the girl, you could say. It's where you'll see family photos and pictures of the Dalai Lama. Most modern girls have TVs and DVD players. Here you have a refrigerator. The back of the gur is also where the elders or the most esteemed guests will sit. The gur's shape is designed to withstand the weather. So the wind breaks around and also the roof. Many have solar panels these days and it's designed to keep you warm in the winter with extra felt and also in the summer thin enough to keep it cool especially those who live in the south Gobi and the hottest parts of Mongolia. Many nomads move between two to four times a year but this can change depending on the family and the area that they come from. showing us the process of how they're making what we just had inside. They are using dung because it's slow burning to heat. Nothing from the animal goes to waste, even its excrement. You can see the dung up close here. Ah, it's warm. It's the right temperature now. We try to keep cup as cold as possible. Mm. That's what you're changing with water. 
I called see. water into that. I see. You know what's in it, right? It's yogurt. The yogurt. But it produces many different things. When the whole process, you make different things along the way. Yeah. Um, now we can make curd mm. and uh, vodka. Because in the alcohol, it's an element. It's very really sensitive for heat. Mm. Mm. When you boil the yogurt, all the alcohol elements goes up. It becomes uh, air. Mm. Then, when they keep going up, they touch the cold thing on the top. Mm -hmm. Then, constantly, it's just a um, condensation happens there and it drops to the center of that here. There's another bowl is there. Then, collect all the alcohol from the yogurt in there. Then, we get the vodka from it. They're gonna have the baby animals in the springtime. Mm. Then, they can get all the milk products during the summertime. In the summertime, we try to don't eat meat that much. We try to eat more dairy products, then maintain our body. Winter time, we need more meat because it's very cold. Of course. In some places, negative 50. Yeah. Celsius, yeah. Yeah. Even though some car couldn't start. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> Say 50 because we cannot measure the more colder than 50. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could ask her how long it takes to construct and deconstruct the girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three to four people is one hour. Wow. <laughs> Three to four people to de uh, deconstruct is around 30 minutes. That's impressive. That's very fast. But it really depends on the experience and also depends on the design of the gear. For example, we do say size of the gear is depends on how many walls are there. From here to there, do you see the connection of the walls? Mm -hmm. It's one wall. Mm. Then from here to there, to the picture, it's a second wall. From the picture to there, it's a third wall. From there to here, it's a fourth, which means this is a four wall gear. Mm. Then we can say the gear size, if it has a five walls, six walls, eight walls. Normal families, they do have four wall gear. And um, if the families keep moving one place to another, depends on the weather, they use smaller than gear, which is mostly three walls. I see. They don't want to carry lots of things because they keep moving. That family moved last year a lot because they still live in the Gobi area. They didn't have enough rain in here. Also, they don't want to lose the animals because of the hunger, right? Mm. Then they keep moving mm. in other places. Then when the time comes, which is the when the weather getting better, they can move back to their own place. That's why we call them nomads. <laughs> Exactly. Now that's the water you can see in the small pot. Here. <laughs> So the hot stones go in with the meat while it's all boiling together. Nothing is wasted, the whole of the animal is used and even the bones are given to the dogs at the end so really is making total use of everything so lid on the food and it's going to take one hour for it to cook 
In the meantime, we're going to try some of the vodka. You have to receive it with two hands and then drink it with two hands as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. A bit milky, but tastes really nice. Very warm, goes down the throat very nicely. More? Okay, you're saying more. So what do you describe, the milk become a vodka? Yeah, a slightly milky vodka, but also it's got like a clear taste to it, I would say. It doesn't feel uh, too strong. It's like a nice taste. I think I could drink all of it in one go. Oh wow, you know. that's cool. More? Okay. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> you just said it. Mm. <laughs> More? Oh my god. All of it. Oh, oh wow. We will finish it. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. Because we have also the tradition, we offer this the vodka or the uh, horse mare's milk, and then who holds the cup, we usually uh, sing a song, and then drink it and give it back. Otherwise, if you don't sing, like it's not acceptable to like give it back. And also that's ah. how we have enough fun in countryside because we don't have a bar or the club to like go outside. So when we have a guest like everybody together, we drink and sing. Yeah. And then playing like there's some kind of the traditional games as well. We have so many drinking games, just using the fingers or like uh, your mental or even the stones then you drink it. <laughs> so this is the fermented horse milk. Oh, it's a Mm. It's like fizzy. This it almost tastes a bit carbonated, yeah. But it's good. I have a bit more. Very good. You can finish. Good. <laughs> 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 Each one has a five fingers and then the number of the guests is like between ten and then by the singing way they play it and then also like they are using the other hand to count it like how many times they are winning and then it's very like mental game also like it improves like our mentally like you're guessing the numbers and then yes singing at the same time and then who won the five times the who's lost they have to drink so that's the traditional drinking game pretty incredible just as the sun is setting you have all of the goats and they are rounding them up to be milked. The lady is milking them at the moment. Children are around. The father of the family is out. What an experience. I can still smell the tobacco in my nostril from sniffing. I will show the clip of them passing it to each other. It's very strong. Hello, Samana.
Okay. Is it better for them? No, they just like it So I did not expect to milk a goat right then and there. Not a very good job. You have to really squeeze hard. And obviously she's much more experienced. You can tell just how firmly she does it and then bang, milk comes out beautifully. Um, clearly an art form. The food is almost ready. They're gonna take off the lid now of the pot and we're gonna see the magic of dinner. Watch out, that's very nice. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we have the food, the meat there with salad, potatoes, carrots, rice. Welcome to Mombadega. Oh, okay. Very good, well done, well done. Oh my god. There you go. So you just, you just want to film me do this. the first round so you don't get more. Oh, no. oh my god. I think the English there. Oh. Oh. Good morning, welcome back to Mongolia. I slept very well last night. By the time we finished all of our games, which was a lot of fun, you show a finger, this one beats this one, this one beats this one, little finger beats thumb. Right now I've been tasked with chasing these sheep back to the family's girl. One person on the left, me on the right, and the boy and James behind. Chasing them back over here. The boy has the sheep. Oh, I need to intercept. Okay, I go here. Just to give you an idea how hard working these people are, every morning they have to milk all of these goats and it produces about 20 litres, which is a hell of a lot of milk. So very hard working people, still living a nomadic lifestyle. Another product from yesterday. Arro. 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 Arro.